All right, so we had another patient show up at Mike Sword Hospital this week, but this one not really a patient, more of an unwanted abandoned orphan, uh, baby in a basket left on my doorstep. Schwan reached out to me, let me know there was another Amazon return coming my way, but this one entirely undamaged, pretty much untouched. The buyer had made the purchase and somewhere in the process after it had been shipped, decided on a cheaper option, took advantage of Amazon's generous return policies, sent it back to Schwan. Now we're talking about a budget sword, which is currently listed on Amazon for about 180 US dollars. And then consider the shipping costs these days between China and the United States. So Schwann's cost to ship it to the US and then the cost of it being sent back to China. And then if somebody else overseas buys it, well, he's got to ship it again. That pretty much eats up the entire value of the sword. So he figured he'd cut some of his losses by sending it my way. I could do a quick review. And then if somebody buys it, he'll send me a shipping label and I'll just drop it off at my local UPS and send it on its way again. Of course, that means I can't do anything that might damage it, take it out of that pristine condition. But we can still take a look at the abandoned baby that I found on my doorstep. Okay, tag still on it. Again, I'm not going to do anything to it that might compromise its sale value. So I have to be really gentle with it, but I can still show it to you. And yes, I have been doing a little bit of practicing with it, moving it around in kata, being, being very gentle with it. Now, visually, it looks a lot like, if you, if you go back to the recent video I did on another Murasame budget katana, one that showed up at the sword hospital with a fractured saya. That one was an Unikubi Zukiri clay-tempered T10 blade for about the same price. This one, similar Saya, Segeo, Suba, Fuchi, Kashira, appearance very similar. But this one has a different blade and steel. Talk about that in a second. But before I move on, I did want to show you something very interesting about this particular site. Well, one, it's not broken. But lockup, really positive, which I kind of expect on a new sword. It's a little bit stiff, and I'm not going to mess with it. I'm actually going to be really careful about not wearing it out at all or breaking it in. But one thing I did absolutely want to show you, or at least have you here, Okay, the microphone is not broken. There is no rattle in the Saya fit. All right, before we talk about the blade, let's go ahead and get the friendly end out of the way. And yes, pretty much the same fixtures as that other $180 budget katana. Cast, painted, Fuchi and Kashra. They have sort of a flower theme. They're certainly not the crispest castings. On the other side, though, the side seams were a lot more prominent than on this particular batch, where it's, it's actually pretty subtle. I did go and reshape them on the other sword and repainted them, but I, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to do that on this set. Same Suba, which is this cast, blackened, cut-out, chrysanthemum style. Now, visually, this struck me as a potential cheese grater for my knuckles on the other sword, but training with that one, yeah, these edges aren't as sharp as they look, so yeah, they don't, they don't hurt me, and handling this sword, same. But I do have to point out some looseness in the Suba, and we'll, we'll talk about the potential reason why. Ito, synthetic, diamonds are not the most clean even but at least it's reasonably tight brass dragon manuki double pin construction so you'll see the lower pins down here i haven't taken apart i'm assuming the nikago goes down to about there there is however a little bit of taper in this suka and also a little bit of curvature which does affect the way it handles and we'll talk about that in a little bit here but I do have to also point out that the other sword, at the same price point, had real Samegawa 
panels. This one has synthetic Same. So if that's a deal breaker for you, it is something he is clear about on the Amazon page. The Habaki showed you the lockup with the, the Saya is really snug. It's a really basic Habaki, but it you know, has some nice texture, some nice satin finish to it. Curved edges, so there's none of those hang-up shelf corners that snag in resheathing. But also, I'm going to say there's just, can you hear it? Yeah, just a little tiny bit of wiggle in the Habaki as well as the Suba. And I, th I think I know why. So let's talk about the blade. All right, finally, let's talk about the blade and some very interesting specs. Now, the other budget katana that we looked at for $180 was an Unukubi Zukiri Profile T10 Clay Tempered. This one, as you can see, is a Shinogi Zukiri Profile with a bohi. It is 9260 spring steel, and it is through hardened. So, no hamon, and I am really glad that he didn't put a fake one on. I, that's a pet peeve of mine. But we'll talk about the potential for the steel in a little bit. But let's talk about those specs. And yes, I'm going to be looking down at, uh, at my notes here so I can give you the metric as well as the imperial. Suka length, 10 and a half inches, 26 and a half centimeters. A little bit on the short side, but it tends to be my preference. Blade length, pretty standard for reproduction, measured from the Habaki, 27 and a half inches, so 70 centimeters. Now, when it comes to fit of these parts, remember, blade width from spine to edge is a pretty standard inch and a quarter, but distal taper on reproductions like this, I tend to expect them to run from eight millimeters here down to about three or four. This one goes from seven to four. So I think that's where the looseness comes from, that these parts were made for a, well, somewhat thicker blade. And I don't know how much of it is working with this metal or other design choices that made it a little thinner down here. But what does that do to the rest of the blade in terms of weight balance and handling? Well, fit finish is actually pretty good. Now, you're not going to get a geometric Yakote at this price point. But the Bohi are nice and crisp and pretty well shaped and terminate in the same spots. I can feel, but not necessarily see, just a tiny bit of rippling in the construction. But the bohi are not very deep. So what does that do to weight and balance? Well, this was very unexpected. I would usually anticipate a sword with this length and blade profile to weigh about two pounds, four ounces. This weighs two pounds, half an ounce, 920 grams. So yeah, a lot lighter than expected, but point of balance a little bit further than I anticipated at four and a half inches off the Habaki, so 11 and a half centimeters. So even though overall the sword is significantly lighter than I would expect, it still has a nice amount of blade presence to it. So let's, let's talk about handling and potential and well, value for the money. Okay, again, I have to be super gentle with this sword to keep it in pristine condition, but yeah, it, it, it's certainly sharp. What about that spring steel flex factor? All right, being a little bit careful here. Yeah, you can see it's got some and, and does flex a little bit more towards the tip, so that's nice. I'm not going to stress it further than that. But in hand... Despite the looseness of the parts and maybe some of the cheapness down here for the, for the budget build, the shape of the Suka feels actually quite good in my hands anyway. It has a lot of my preferences in terms of length and shape. No real hot spots picking up on that Suba. The limited amount of EI I've done with it has just been pretty nice. Like I said, that Saya fit is really good and, and really snug right now. I'm not going to mess with it. don't want to do too much with it because I don't want to break it in. 
but I'm actually quite impressed with the way this particular blade feels. It's overall quite light, but it still feels like it's got good blade presence. I expect it would be a good cutter, but I don't know because I'm not going to take the risk of doing that. Now, I've heard some great things about mono-tempered spring steel 9260 blades in terms of their durability. And this one does have just a little bit more meat in it than some of the swords that I'd be well more worried about taking damage. So I think this sword would be quite durable. I think this would suit a couple of different kinds of, well, buyer. One, an entry-level practitioner, a sword that you don't really have to worry much about in terms of, uh, you know, damaging it in backyard cutting, but also, um, you know, if you're not used to a heavier sword, uh, a nice lighter blade that still has good balance and feel, yeah, this would be a great training tool for kata as well as cutting. And again, when it comes to this, the potential fragility of some of those really razor-fine clay-tempered blades, yeah, I, I expect this one would be a sword you wouldn't have to worry about harming. And if you harmed it, well, it would be a lot easier to fix. Speaking of, of reprofiling the edge, here's another, well, uncomfortable, at least for me, choice. This might be a sword that you buy specifically to blunt the edge, because you don't have to worry about it being clay-tempered and what that's going to do, blunt the edge and turn it into an Iaito. Or maybe really blunt it and turn it into a sword that you can do steel fencing with. So those would be things to consider. Spring steel should hold up to that level of use and abuse. So a couple of possibilities for a sword in this price range. So do I think it's worth it? Well, obviously the buyer found something cheaper. I don't know what he selected, but I think for the uh, the possibilities of this blade as an entry-level blade, it's, it's not at all a bad choice. I personally would do a little work on it, but that's me. And I'm not going to because it's not mine. Not yet. But if you have any questions about this blade, um, let's get that conversation going in the comments. If you happen to be the buyer of this sword who returned it, give me your thoughts. I absolutely want to hear from you. And I'll let you know when it goes out the door in a future update. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, following my journey, subscribing, liking the videos, and I hope to see you back for, well, the next episode of Mike's Sword Hospital.